So hi everyone, thank you for being here. I'm Marie from uh, Telecom Paris Tech. This is a joint work with uh, Pierre-Alexandre Murinin, who is somewhere in the crowd, and other colleagues from Paris. So the nice thing about being the last one to present is that I can skip all the introductions about recommendation and just uh, head to the problem we're addressing in this paper. So most uh, recomm recommender systems that are being proposed today are meant to work in batch where we're learning a, mo a recommendation model based on a static da data set and then updating the, mod uh, updating the model periodically. So in this, in this paper, we are addressing the recommendation problem as a data stream problem where we assume that, you know, that user interactions are being received in real time and, um, it and also items are being made available in, re in real time. So this is a common uh, setting uh, in, for example, news recommendation, tweet recommendation, or also other examples. So um, the idea is that we need to handle observations in real time and continuously learn from the data streams uh, and the observation we're receiving. We're considering a hybrid recommendation approach in order to address the item called start problem. So um, we rely on incremental learning in order to update the model in real time. And the main problem in the, in the stream in, when handling data streams is to um, adapt to concept drifts that may occur in the data. So user preferences may change and item perception, perceptions also may change. So in this work, we show the interest of using uh, drift detection techniques in the recommendation problem. So our approach, we propose our approach, which is, which is called the COA Wilda for Adaptive Collaborative Topic Modeling. So we, our approach is based on the known framework uh, for recommendation, collaborative topic modeling, which is a hybrid approach, which is based on the matrix factorization for the collaborative filtering part and on LDA for the topic modeling part. So the idea is to learn uh, user, uh, user latent factors and item latent factors um, based on the feedback matrix and on textual descriptions of items. So you know, in our work, in order to be able to update the models incrementally, we rely on the incremental matrix factorization for the like, collaborative filtering part. And we also propose a, a, a new approach for topic modeling, which incorporates a drift detection um, uh, component. So, the, uh, so our approach is, um, is called uh, AWILDA and I will present it a little bit later. So how does our framework work? So considering we're receiving a new interaction, we use the matrix factorization uh, component in order to update the user, uh, the corresponding user model and the item model. When we receive a new, uh, a new item, we use the topic modeling part in order to extract the topics from the text describing the item and add it to the existing model. So um, how, does, uh, the, how does the topic model part work? Uh, the idea is that we need to, um, drifts may happen when in the text, in the topic model that that we are incrementally updating. So um, our approach uh, relies on ADWIN, which is a drift detection technique um, well known in the streaming community. So ADWIN um, handles a, a, window, um, a, re a window of real values. For each observation, we're just adding one real value in, um, in, the, um, in the window. And ADWIN will indicate if there's a drift that, is, that was detected, and if the, the recent data that were uh, received correspond to a new data distribution. At this point, we we'll need to re retrain our topic model in order to update, to, to adapt it to the change in the distribution. So we rely on two uh, LDA components, one which is incrementally updated and is used to extract the topics and model, and model the items. The other one is used for the detection part, so considering that we're receiving one document, so as I said, uh, the LDA modeling part will be used to extract the topics and will be incrementally updated, and the other component will be used for the, for the detection part. We use it to compute the likelihood, um, the likelihood of the model and add it to the ADWIN uh, component. So we assume that the change in the, in the stream of likelihood we, is indicating a, changing in the, in the, a change in the data distribution. 
So here is an example. Uh, so here is uh, an example of when we're receiving a, a document. So for a second document that we're being received, uh, that is being received, the same operation is. Uh, we do just do the same operation until we uh, until adwit indicate, uh, indicates uh, that uh, that uh, it detects a drift. At this moment, we use uh, the, um, the the documents that were that that are in the that correspond to the new data distribution in order to retrain retrain both LDA models and to adapt to the to the current to the change in the distribution. So, um, in order to evaluate our approach, we uh, we the, the protocol we use is was proposed for recommendation in a streaming setting. We use the first part of the the first thirty percent part of the data set in order to in initialize the model. Then we use the the second twenty percent part of the data set in order to validate the initially learned model. And we report the results on the second half of the data set, where for each received observation, we use it to test the model and evaluate it, and then to update, to incrementally update it. So we evaluated separately both tasks, the task of uh, online topic modeling and the task of online recommendation. The data sets we used were uh, movie lens, the MovieLens data set, where we considered the abstract, the movie abstracts as uh, a textual representation of items, and the PISTA data set, which is a news recommendation data set. Uh, so I will move to the, um, so all the experiments are in the paper. I will just show the experiments considering the recommendation uh, problem uh, evaluated on the PISTA data set. So we evaluated um, uh, our approach against uh, content-based uh, approach, which uh, using our uh, topic modeling, uh, our approach for topic modeling, we also um, evaluated the item KNN matrix factorization. The equivalent, and we also evaluated the equivalent of our approach without the drift detection uh, component in order to prove uh, the the utility of this uh, component. So um, our approach outperforms the other approaches we, we, we compare to. And um, there's an interesting, so we, we had an interesting result in our experiments showing that uh, when comparing the, the matrix factorization approach to the equivalent of our approach without the drift detec detection um, uh, component, we realized that at some point in time, the collaborative filter, the matrix factorization model outperforms the model that is using the text and the, the topic modeling uh, component, but that is not taking into account the drifts occurring in the data. This means that uh, in a streaming setting, without taking into account the drifts that may occur uh, in the data, the content doesn't, I mean, the, the content is not helping the model and, and only using collaborative filtering is better than using, um, than using the text uh, to, to improve uh, the recommendation. We also uh, evaluated the recall uh, at uh, different values of uh, n. Um, we can see, we can also see here that the, um, the, the textual um, descriptions start to lose its interest at different, uh, at different points in time with respect to the end that we're fixing. So this means that uh, for, for, for lower n, we can see that uh, since the, the beginning of the evaluation, the matrix factorization is outperforming the approach using text without the drift detection component. So uh, in conclusion, our approach is uh, combining a three state-of-the-art approach, one for uh, collaborative filtering, the other one is for topic modeling, and the other one is for drift detection. Uh, we show the interest of using drift detection in a recommendation in a data streaming, in a streaming environment. Future work, we, future work we include um, detecting drifts in when modeling user, uh, when, when, when learning user models, uh, based only based on the user interactions. Thank you. Okay, it's time for questions. Uh, first, thanks for the great talk. Uh, I'm Jay from Intuit. 
So uh, I was wondering, because LDA has one of the challenges, which is about the scalability issue. So I was wondering, like, when you actually learned the model on the, uh, the Plista data set, for example, which has, you know, relatively high, you know, uh, data point size, uh, how long did it take? And then also may I ask you, like, the, the number of vocabularies uh, used for the LDA? Uh, so the first question is how long did it take, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so we're using the online LDA approach, which was, which was proposed to model, to extract topics in real time. So um, honestly, I don't know if I can say how long did it take, but I mean, the, the online LDA was designed to work in a real time setting in order, to, for each, in order to handle documents one by one. So this is why we used it in, in our model. Then for the vocabulary size, um, I think you can find the information in the paper. I, I'm sorry, but I... Okay, yeah, I, thanks. Yeah. Hi, uh, this is Arnie from Flipboard. Uh, thanks for a great talk. Um, I have two questions, actually. So number one, um, I, I noted, so you, from what I understand, you're doing, and you're computing two LDAs, like you're doing just to com compute the drift in likelihoods. So one of the things that, you know, that I'm wondering, like how do you, so how do you compute the like, likelihood? Like, do you do it in batches? Because you know, if you are doing it, if you are doing it in a very small batch, you know, it might be very noisy. So I mean, what is the batch size if there is one, and how are you computing that? Okay, so we're doing it document by document, but on the other hand, Edwin is um, so Ed, so there are some parameters. So you can fix a number of parameters for Edwin that will indicate the sensibility of the drift detection algorithm and that would be rather more sensible or less sensible to the small changes that may occur in the data. But we are doing it um, uh, document by document. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, the only reason I'm asking is, you know, sometimes like working in the new space, like, you know, sometimes you might get a completely uh, ridiculous article that might actually confuse your topic model in a way. So. Uh, do you think it might be a better idea to do it in batches to detect the drift or? or? I mean, yes, but then uh, the problem is that how do you define the size of the batch? Yeah. Are you going to miss uh, an event that is happening inside one batch or not? I mean, the idea of doing it document by document is to, to be able to, to adapt to the, to the changes. We don't know when these changes are happening. Then uh, when you have a big window, if you have a noisy document or uh, or something that a false positive, you, the 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 algorithm won't uh, won't detect a change. Then so yeah, that's that's fair. Uh, actually, one last question: like, uh, did you consider using something like topics over time or dynamic topic models, like in, instead of doing a separate like drift detection? Yes. So uh, the, in dynamic topic models, there are several issues. One of them is what we just said, the problem of using uh, mini batches. So you need to define a time slice saying like uh, you, you evaluate documents every week or every month. So you need to have this parameter that we didn't want to have in order to, I mean, we didn't want to have this parameter. Then dynamic, dynamic topic models are not al always meant to work in online settings. Right. So this is another issue also. Cool, thank you. Thanks. Coming from industry, we are obsessed with scalability. So my question would be like, you know, usually more than one machine serves uh, recommendations. So how would, like, do you have some idea how could you distribute that process of updating? Yes, so this is really interesting. I'm not from the industry, so. I'm less sensible to these questions, obviously, but um, I didn't think about distributing, um, so I don't have an answer for how we could, but I mean, yeah, this could be eventually. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. That was the last paper. Let's thank the speaker.